all quiet on the Western Front. Um, how did you first get involved with that project? I worked with the director Edward Berger before. We did The Terror together. Um, that was produced by Ridley Scott um, and it was a, a 10 part show. I did something else in between and then I got a, an email from Edward some, but just out of the blue, basically saying, do you want to get the band back together? Um, and he didn't even tell me what it was. Um, and then I was sort of, then he sent me the script and, you know, I'm, I'm German. So this, this book is really sort of, it's, it's like edged in our brains. Um, and so you have huge respect for this book. And it was one of those things where I didn't even think about Usually when I read a script, I, right away, sort of ideas and technologies pop up in my head. How are you going to do this? And, and this one, I had to read it three, four times before even thinking about VFX. Because you, you sort of right away knew that um, you, you can't do the typical, you know, spectacle war film. You know, there's there's no heroes. There's a definite story, uh, like, like a, a, a mission, a message. Uh, in this book, and and uh, we had to do it right, and it couldn't be, you know, one of those fireworks type of thing. When when I thought about how we're going to do this and with whom, and and I actually, you know, thought back to the terror. I worked with a shop in Prague, uh, UPP Victor Müller. They did great set extensions um, because we shot the terror on a, on a green screen stage. We, mm -hmm. we built a boat, and it barely fit on the stage, so. It was always like, you know, the generals pointing into the distance and then the green screen was a, just a few feet away from them. Um, and it turned out very photorealistic. So I wanted to work with them again. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's sort of, you read the script. Um, I, I met with the producer and Edward, and then, um, you know, the first thing was to establish what do we need to have on set? and what can I bring to the table. So that was a discussion, a very tight discussion between our department, uh, Christian Goldbeck, um, myself and SFX. And, you know, the safety aspects, of course, the tank didn't go over Paul Bonner. Um, and you, you sort of, you, you, just, you narrow it down to the point where you know, okay, we, we need about this many shots. And again, it was sort of like, I, I was able to channel like the, the old way of doing it, where I would tell the producer, you know, in order to make this look photo real without distracting and not doing it, making the science project out of it, I need time on set. And and they just, you know, they were open to it and it's like, yeah, okay, let's, let's give you time on set. I know it's for them. Nowadays, they just rock through a day because they know they can do anything in the computer. But I, I wanted to stay photo real also to respect my budget um and if you if you shoot real elements on set nobody questions whether that looks funny or not mm -hmm. it just is the way it is and 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 you have a little bit of a sort of the, the creativity comes back and and happy accidents you know you, you you experiment with sfx you know what what do you want to put in the charge to make this huge dust plume and then you, you start you know you notice that you're actually starting to you're making films and you're not this vfx technician you know and um, we were shooting on a at an airport in an abandoned airport outside of prague so we had a lot of space and we had a, f a few trenches dug out and dressed but i also asked for a special piece of a trench that could support a tank so i can do all the tank sequences there um, and then i was able to build a green screen stage outside which was great because the lighting always matched. You know, this, if, if you stu stu uh, shoot elements in the studio for an outside uh, background, you really have to be careful with the lighting. And they always stand out somehow. Um, but if you do it outside, you know, you, you have the elements, you have the right light. Um, and um, same with the explosions. We were so far away. I, I was able to set up um, I don't know, a few hundred yards uh, further north, so I was able to actually pick a few hills against the sky um, with the polarizer, then shoot explosions that are they were perfectly keyable. The same goes for like you know black burning smoke. You know we had like those diesel racks that we set on fire, and then you have this that all that stuff really helped, and they they almost turned into characters in a way because it helped us 
during the comping phase really sort of get some geography to the shots because mm -hmm. you never knew where the guys were running or where they were because everything was so dense and we made it on purpose very dense in, in compositing but sometimes it was good to see something in the background that you could just sort of make out and go ah that's you know that, that we're back to him now because there's the smoke i mean if i got comping was so heavy on this show um uh, especially with yeah just the rotoscoping alone <laughs> you know they're always motion blurred yeah <laughs> nobody ever stands still uh, and we wanted to have tons of layers we didn't just want to you know cut them out and then replace the background we want, really wanted to layer it so it felt like um you're like uh, it's almost like you're underwater in, in like the soupy mess um and i think that helped a lot and of course james our dop it's great. I had so much fun working with him, but he's a fan of, of using wide angle lenses. You want to be close to the actor, so you feel like you're with them, but you always see everything. No. <laughs> you practically, practically you can see the curvature of the earth. But I don't know if you noticed, um, and, and and I love James for that. And, and also Edward is that there's an unusual amount of, of static locked off shots in this show, which is absolutely unusual for an action film nowadays and and long edits i mean we have full cg matte paintings that sit there for 10 seconds wow and and that's that was so rewarding because you you're working on this huge shot and it's not just cut a second and a half it's like you actually can look at it <laughs> and and that was that was really refreshing yeah it's it's frustrating when you spend months on a, a particular shot and then once you see it without handles in the edit it's just blinks by and it's just like yeah oh, that for that <laughs> i was just uh breaking down a bid the other day with my ep and um that was one of those conversations that came up it's like well we shouldn't charge too much because these are really short sh shots but it's like it doesn't oh, matter yeah. how short the shot is <laughs> it's not yeah. really the setup so uh it's, yeah th those problems of course as a, as a vfx supervisor you have to be it's it's your responsibility too um, and that's why i'm always on set and I, I never take shows anymore afterwards because I don't want to fix somebody else's ideas or if something didn't work out. And, you know, a lot of time, depending on what director you get, um, they haven't done CG before or just basic stuff. You have to educate them. You have to work with them. You, you have to throw out ideas. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of making a shot simpler, just moving the camera by a foot or, you know, just go, hey, you know what if we do it from down here, it looks cooler and it's 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 much easier to do and more effective like for example the um it's it's a it's a horribly graphic shot but it was it was really fun to work on is is when the tank rolls over the soldiers mm -hmm. and it's it's one of those shots where everybody always gasps in the theater you know we had a lot of time on set to to put the shot together um so i was able to not only shoot different layers for the shot but i was able to relocate the camera to another set where I could do uh, pieces of the tank. And then, you know, on the next day, I had some time because they were doing dialogue um, to shoot some matching, you know, wall pieces. And um, and it sort of, it came together textbook. It was really sort of, could be like a, nu a nuke advertisement of this show. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, I'm always saying that everything was done with elements. We did have a boatload of <clears throat> uh, Houdini simulations, uh, especially when the camera was moving, of course, your, your element falls apart. Um, but we sort of, I guess the, the general philosophy was to just see where we get with our elements mm -hmm. and then use CG to mend it or, or, you know, Houdini particle simulations rather than the other way around. Of course, the tanks were, you know, CG models. Uh, the one tank that we had that is in close up, um, we had to augment a little bit to make it look real, authentic. And of course, the planes and uh, all kinds of the rats are real, by the way. Oh, yeah. I shot them on a stage. <laughs> <laughs> it was when when we were shooting um, the, ins the signing of the, the capitulation, basically, Daniel Brühl inside the train car. Uh, there was a little small stage next to the one stage so i went a couple days before and i went to the ad says can i have the stage i want to try doing the rats real and we found an animal wrangler who had a few rats 
So I built like a green screen channel and had him run towards camera, uh, duplicated that a bunch. And some rats got away. I wonder <laughs> if Daniel Bruhl knows about it. He was next door. <laughs> <laughs>